Besides making amazing content, what should you as a YouTube creator be focused on? I mean, a lot of us simply look at our data, look at our analytics, look at a couple of metrics and make our next video and hoping that one is going to do better than the previous one. Well, if that's all you're doing, you're leaving a lot of things on the table. So today we're going to be diving into five YouTube analytics that you need to know in order to take your channel to that next level. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hey, welcome to another episode of Tube Talk. My name is Liron Segev. I'm a tech blogger, a YouTuber, and the director of customer success here at VidIQ, where every day we help creators, big and small, level up their channels, get more subscribers, more views in less time. And in order to do this, we know that data is super important. You know, data is like your friend, your good friend, who doesn't tell you what you want to hear but tells you what you need to hear. And that's the beauty about data. It's unemotional. It simply tells you whether something worked or something didn't work. And we have to spend lots and lots of times in our data in order to really understand it. So today on Tube Talk, I'm very excited to chat with the man, the legend, Tim Schmoyer from Video Creators, someone who's very passionate about helping people spread their message and changing lives. Tim, welcome to Tube Talk. Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to be back. It's been uh, a while. <laughs> that, you have a good history with Tube Talk, right? Yeah, way uh, way back in the beginning. I don't even remember when that was, but I know <laughs> it was several years ago. Um, yeah, someone started it and I came on and look at you. Now you got it and you're just pioneering and moving <laughs> forward with it just as awesome as anyone else could have. So thank you for doing it. Well, and I appreciate you being on with us. So yeah, uh, Tim, for the three people who don't know who Tim is, give me Tim in a tweet. In a tweet. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, you, well, I'm a guy who, I don't know how many characters this is gonna be. Uh, we got 280, right? So it's, yeah, I'm a YouTube certified consultant that works with creators. Started because I wanted to introduce my girlfriend to my family when I was halfway across the country made videos, they grew, freaked out because I didn't know why people were watching, started figuring out how YouTube was working. And here we are now, uh, well, full time, seven years now. And we've done YouTube strategy for Disney, for Warner Brothers, HBO, eBay, Budweiser, um, MTV, the Grammys just reached out to me like wow. two, uh, two days ago. Uh, so everyone from like top brands all the way down to creators are just getting started, helping them grow, spread their message, reach more people, change their lives and, uh, and, and really spread what they're trying to do through YouTube. Well, I, I mean, that was, a, I, that was like five tweets. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I recognize, I think one or two of those brand names, they're not really big, but they're okay. <laughs> but what yeah, I do love, a few of those. I do love uh, on your channel and the way that you interact with people, you're on stage um, around the various conferences and people kind of gravitate towards what you say because you keep it real you make it practical and i love the fact that it's less theory but more of, hey do this then do that then do the next thing because practicality kind of really gets you to that next level so on behalf of the youtube community we do want a, a big shout out to to you for doing that so that's really well, really you. awesome yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Tim, let's let's do something a little bit different today. You know, we've spoken a lot about the analytics and a, lo a lot of people kind of know that they need to look at certain stats and they go into that dashboard, but they don't really deep dive into something beyond just live views and the very, very basics. So what do you think about we dive into something a little bit deeper, something maybe more advanced stuff, call it the next level? Does that work for you? Yeah, yeah, this, like you said, most people just look at their views, their watch time, their subscribers, the good ones will look at their audience retention. Cool. <laughs> and then I see all, just like you, probably all these posts on Facebook about like my channels, blah, 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 the YouTube algorithm hates me. And, oh. and I'm like, well, did you look? I mean, the answers are usually right there in your analytics and you see exactly what's happening. And they're like, no, cause they just post the overall screenshot of like high, high, and there's a place for the high level metrics, of course, right. but 
I'm like, why don't you dig in and see what's going on? And they don't do that. And I'm like, well, you just created a lot of drama for no reason. <laughs> so <laughs> why you, you, you mean figured you, out the answer just by clicking a few more times? Are you telling me YouTube does not hate small creators? Is that what you're trying to say? I am absolutely saying that we work with creators all the time who are just starting out and grow very quickly. And mm. not everyone, of course, but sure. it still happens. And there are creators who are going off the platform all the time, people who are giving up, people who are quitting, and there's more and more people coming on. There's still like a ton of opportunity here, but you okay. don't get a participation trophy. You know, it's not one of those things. Uh, but <laughs> so absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, as you, they don't recognize hard work and a lot of effort. They recognize actual results. So. Well, it doesn't care about the fact that you spent 10 hours editing and it doesn't right. care about the fact that you missed your kids' graduations because you were in a shoot. It, it doesn't Ooh, feature yeah. into this, which is why the data is unemotional. And if you understand how to read the data, you can make data-driven decisions, the ones right. and the zeros. And I think that's um, we can dive into some of those deeper metrics, see yeah. what people should be looking at. I've got five that we typically work at when, or look at when we work with our clients um, on a like one-on-one -on -one basis. We we do look at the top level stuff like views and watch times and subs and audience retention. But then there's a few other things that we typically do, which we'll talk about here that I think are important as like kind of next level things you should be looking at that really help you spot more opportunities for growth on your channel. And the first thing that we do, uh, there's a tool in there that's super valuable that like not a lot of people, I, I did a session yesterday with a guy who has 2 million subscribers. And I'm like, he's like, I don't know if I should do this or that. I'm like, well, that's easy. You can test it. Uh, for, what was the situation? He was like, um, uh, I forget what we were trying to test, but you can test almost anything like with this. And, and he's, and so I, I, he didn't know what groups were. He'd never heard of them before. And so I was like, all right, go. Here's how you guys get to it. If you haven't heard of groups either, you go to your, YouTube Creator Studio dashboard, click on analytics in the left sidebar, and then um, click the little show more link or go to advanced mode there mm -hmm. and it'll pop open like the whole big graph of, uh, of everything that's happening in your channel. In the upper left corner next to the search bar, it'll say your channel name. Click on the channel name, like not next to it or around it, like actually on the channel name, a little drop down menu will appear and there'll be a tab in there that says groups. You click on groups, and then there'll be a blue button that says create new group. And you can click on that and just highlight anything you want. So for example, maybe thumbnails with faces and then click all the, like maybe put 10 videos in there that have thumbnails with faces and then make another group called thumbnails without faces and then click uh, add a whole bunch of videos so that maybe like 10 videos that have thumbnails without faces. Then here's where the power of this tool comes in. You can use all the way on the right side of the screen. You'll see at the upper right is blue. It says compare to click on that. And then you can compare groups to groups. So you mm -hmm. can compare all the videos that are in the thumbnails with faces to all the videos with thumbnails without faces and see, oh, overall, like on average, if I have a face in my thumbnail, they perform, I don't know, <laughs> 10, and a half percent better. I just made that up. It really depends. But, uh, but you can do that with literally ev anything. And uh, we, I have more uses for that, which we'll talk about as we go through some of these other things here. But uh, I'm sure you guys use groups and stuff well, absolutely as, uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, groups are super powerful, and they've been around for quite a while. Even in classics, I think we had groups, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they were so buried, and nobody right. really used them. But once you discover the power of groups, you can then really get a good understanding of what's working and what isn't working. Um, I worked with a good family vlogger, big channels, and they were just doing lots of, you know, the normal family stuff, throwing a lot of stuff out there. And when I looked at their groups and I grouped them into games versus songs, for example, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we, we saw that games were far outperforming songs, which took them 10 times longer to produce. Mm -hmm. Make less of that, more of the games, family channel blew up again. It's all yeah. about understanding it. So I love the idea of groups and the big disclaimer that I always like to say with groups, don't let one group like inform your entire decisions you know right because yeah. as you know with like thumbnails it's not just the thumbnails it's a whole bunch of other factors it's the topics it's all of those but it does give you a little bit more of an understanding of what's going on mm -hmm. and another layer of insight something else to feature into your strategy yeah the other disclaimer i give with groups is that if 
if it, sometimes we'll compare two groups and we're like, whoa, this thing's way off the charts. Like, holy mm. cow, I'm glad. So, but then you look at that group and there's like only one what? video yeah, and then it's got like a couple million views yeah. and all the rest have like 10 views or something, <laughs> right? It's like, okay, like that's skewing the data. So I, you do have the look of the groups and I'll often take off, I wanna go for the median, take me to take off the bottom two and the top two exactly. from, the, from the list so that we are having more apples to apples comparison. Yep as opposed to like one video being you know, just tanked or just took off, <laughs> took off and right. now it's skewing everything. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, and on that as well, just on that's, I'm gonna comment on your comment. Um, yeah. the, it very, it's very important again, when you look at like yours, you know, your 30 days and your 90 days is to do exactly that. You could have an outlier video that could have performed amazingly well. Don't let that be the judge of your entire channel's direction just because it got picked up on a Reddit subreddit or right. on Google discover pages. Yeah. So you can use groups, not just to compare a B test type of stuff like that, but you can also use groups to look at like topics, like, or different themes or shows or series, like, like you're referring to, uh, another way, and we'll talk about this more in a second too, but we use them to look at how are the videos I published this month compared to the videos I published last mm. month, you know, so like, May 2020 videos versus April 2020 videos sure. or whatever. Like, and so Absolutely. I want to know, is the content I'm making actually growing my channel or am I just growing because I have a few heavy hitters that I published mm. five years ago that's a responsible for 98% of my growth <laughs> and <laughs> nothing I've been doing for the past few years is actually helping. <laughs> it happens way more often than you would think. Uh, what is yeah. so true that is so 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 true you you basing content today on something that maybe popped a year ago two years ago three years ago and you're basing your entire life's existence yeah. on that one thing so yeah critical critical well, it happens context. if you're only looking at overview content you're like oh i get 200 subs a day mm -hmm. and you're like okay and then you and then all of a sudden 200 subs a day goes away and you're like oh, what do oh. you do i haven't changed anything <laughs> and then they look at the data and what you'd actually find is you were getting 500 subs a day on right. these two videos from five years ago and every video you've published since then has actually been costing you 300 subscribers per day oh. <laughs> so it's like yeah. yeah so the groups can groups can help you spot things like that number two Go. uh this is going to sound a little bit weird but this is we kind of we we're working with a, a client who had i think at this point they have like six million subs but back then they had around four million subs and they were like tim i want to know the difference between a 300 for him a 300 thousand view video and a one million view video he's like I can't tell, like I make a video, I think it's going to be awesome. I publish it. And instead of going to like a million, it peters out at around 200, 300,000 views. Why, what's going on? And so we're thinking like, well, there's data that can help us see exactly what's going on. We don't know. So we, we dug into his, into his, uh, into his analytics and we created two groups, groups of videos that had 300,000 ish views mm -hmm. on average and the and the videos that had million views and we compared those two groups and we dug in like what's the difference between these and the next two metrics i recommend that you guys look at is based on not just that one guy's channel but we did it again with the guy yesterday who's got two million subs and we do this a lot and there you will see a huge difference typically not in every case right sure. but for most of the time you'll see there is a very significant difference between the next two metrics. The first one being end screen elements shown. So a video for him that was like 300,000 uh, views or less only had, like well, I won't say the percentage because it varies a lot from niche to niche channel, mm -hmm. channel audience to audience. So I don't want to set like an expectation for anybody, but it, it was a certain percentage or lower. He was only going to get 300,000 views. And then there's this big gap in the, wow. in the numbers. And then anything with like a million plus had a, a, a significantly higher percentage of end screen elements shown. Now, I think if we think about it, it makes sense why that would be the case right. because there's more people now getting to the end of the video, which means you're getting more watch time. Right. So shocker, I know, <laughs> but it's like one easy way. You can just look at one metric and be like, Overall, what percentage of the people got to the end dish of this? Yes. I mean, at the very end, but they got to within the final 20 seconds anyway. 
of this content. And obviously the more people that did that, the higher the percentage of screen element shown was, mm -hmm. thus the better the video performed overall. So that really comes nice. back to you. You really got to hook and hold your audience's uh, attention. And that's one metric you can look at quickly to find out how well you're doing. And then on that, it's, are you just sending them to your next video or are you just waving them goodbye? You know, it's about retent keeping people engaged and watching within your own content, within your own library. So what a lot of mistakes that we see time and time again, people get to the end and they do the whole, ah, thanks guys for hanging out here. It's been so much fun. Like, let me know, or anything uh, like, let me know what you think. That, yeah, or, exactly. Apps, all those uh, ending things. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. All those signals, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, so you've basically projected already that it's done. But remember for you, it's done, but the journey for the viewer is still carrying on. So if you watch a lot of Tim's videos as well, he gets to the end and he says, and if you want more information about good storytelling, check out this playlist I put together for you. Sending the viewer to that next playlist, keeping them more engaged on your channel, more engagement, all these beautiful signals to YouTube, good content, all of these things rise, rise, raise your channel. So I love that tip. Watch the well, end that's actually the third one too. Ah, uh, so you already hit it. You're, got, you're not got thinking it. the same way, which is, good, <laughs> which is the second metric um, that we saw there's a pretty big significant gap between 300 and a million is end screen elements clicked. So, which again, makes sense for the exact same reason that you just said. It's, it's not only how many people got to the end, but then also mm. how many people clicked. This video is so good that they want to keep going and watch more. And we saw a pretty significant gap in those metrics based on those groups as well. So use nice. the groups for two, look at the end screen elements shown, three, evaluate clicks, and you get bonus points if you do what Iran said, which is get them into a playlist. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't on my list, but it could be is like you guys, I don't know if you if you know this, but you can change all of your analytics instead of being about videos to now being about playlists. And you get into your playlist analytics. And you can mm. see what the exit mm. rate is for, for like how each video contributes to the viewer exiting that playlist, which has the most amount of watch time in the playlist and how the session time increases if you get someone into this video in the playlist versus that video in the playlist. And so now you can start to optimize which video should come first, which video should come second. This oh. video needs to come out, it has high abandonment. They should watch this video, they leave. And you can start to optimize the viewing session for the viewer based on your playlist analytics. So that's oh, not that's... in my list, but a little bonus. <laughs> no, no, no. I, and I'm glad that is because that is super, super powerful. A lot of people have a playlist with no strategy. It's more like my stuff. And there's a yeah, thousand these videos. Like categories of categories or right, something. Right. It's like a, more like a folder that you store things under. Right, uh, but, exactly. but you can actually deep dive so well inside that playlist to the point, as Tim is saying, understanding what's working and what isn't working. Well, guess what? The stuff that's working, move to the top. The stuff that isn't working, get it out of there. Deep sure. dive into your playlist and don't just make it into folders. So thank you for the bonus tip. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like, yeah, do not do the folders mm. category. It's not a WordPress category. Right. You, you still need to title it so that it's clickable, like the same principles that apply to making a clickable video, apply to a playlist get that headline right so they click into it don't make like all 52 videos of yours i could apply to that thing no one's going to watch that mm -hmm. we found you get it works the best if it's a very short consumable playlist of your best content so it's nice. like your top four five six maybe eight or ten if they're all really short videos so that people don't look at that and like 56 videos i don't get that <laughs> and they don't even click but if it's like i put together the next five things that yeah. are really going to help you move forward i click right here then you, uh, our, on our clients, they, they're click through rate. It's average click through rate on end screen. We've seen is typically between, uh, like when they do it the way you said, which is like, just goodbye. Hope this was helpful <laughs> for you. Like people just leave and around 0.7 to 1% click through rate. But if you naturally don't give any ending signals and just say like click here and give a little pitch for it, then we've seen it go up to like our highest we've seen is 42 percent but it tends what? to average around the 30 some uh percent click through rate hey we'll take that absolutely yeah, I mean, Any you day. Get like 30 percent more watch time without getting thank you very viewer. much absolutely yeah. you've done the work already you might as well right yeah okay so nice number four then is real-time analytics and we don't track this for our 
clients, to be honest. We <laughs> encourage them to do that because we don't, we don't like just hover over their channels the way they do. Um, maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud. But we, we <laughs> delete, we'll delete. Get we look at the data regularly, but not every single day. Right. And if you are one of those people who is checking it every single day, if you're not, don't worry about this one. But if you are already in there every single day, looking at like what's happening, definitely keep an eye on the real-time analytics because what you can see happening there is if an older video of yours starts to take off, starts to get some momentum. So uh, I worked with several creators in the past few months who have videos that were flat for a long time and then the pandemic hit and now all of a sudden all their videos on Zoom tutorials and how to cook <laughs> from home and, mm. and how to do haircuts, <laughs> things all like exploded and so they could they could see that was happening because they were keeping an eye on the real time right. analytics, seeing that oh these videos like from two years ago is all of a sudden getting a lot of traction. What you want to do when you see that happening is make a follow up video like a part two or answering like whatever the top questions are people are asking in the comments of that previous video. Just get people to have another video for them to watch after that. Nice. So. Uh, so it'll, what it'll do is it'll increase the, the viewing session from your first video. Cause your next video that's on a similar topic will likely get them to click and watch another one. So now you're catapulting the first video a little bit further off of the first one. And you're also getting that first one higher now too, because it's right. leading to a longer viewing session, which is now making that first video perform better as well. So keep an eye on real time. So you can not do like the same video, but do like. If you're doing the same video, no one has a reason to click. Right. Make the next part, the part two, the follow up, the answering the common objection people have after your first one, like something like that, and get that up as quickly as you Ooh. can to ride the waves of the first one. Uh, by the way, I like that. Go look at the comments. And if people are, co are complaining about something specific, that's actually quite a good little indicator to say, well, you guys didn't like this when I said this there, let me explain why, or let me tell you why this has changed in 2020. And then there's an updated version of the next topic. Now, Tim, yeah. a big question that we get all the time, it's something like, I have a video, it's starting to get traction, it's starting to get momentum. When should I make my next video? Should I do it immediately? Should I wait a week? Should I wait a month? What should be my time between video one and video two? It's a good question. It's a complicated question because of course. there's two there's two cliffs you can fall off of of either side of this. One cliff is that you end up just making um, Zoom tutorials now, <laughs> right? Right, and you're like, oh, this is doing really well. Make another, and and you get some momentum, but then people start to think of you. At, you start your brand is like the Zoom tutorial guy. And you never wanted to do that, but you're just following where the views are. And then pandemic stuff starts to slow down. And now you're like stuck as exactly. the Zoom guy and no one really wants to watch it anymore. <laughs> and it's not just Zoom. Uh, we worked with sure. a, a, a guy who grew to two and a half million subscribers by mailing, m shipping himself to other countries in a box. He uh, I'm sorry, his, you're, you're going to have to say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> he would put himself in a box, take his passport with him, mail himself to another country to see what would happen. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he just did one video. And as you can tell, like, there's a lot of curiosity. There's a lot of tension in your brain right now. Like, okay. you have to click on that when you see it. You're like, what the heck? What? <laughs> you wonder, like, how did that happen? And so all the tension in your brain. He did a right. good job telling the story. That video blew up. So he's like, oh, I'll do it again. So he puts himself in another box and mails him. And so he started building his channel. He's getting a lot crazy momentum, <laughs> but the boxing started to wear off. So he started putting himself in big giant um, floaty balls and floating across canals into other countries and landing on their beaches with his passport. Like just, <laughs> you know, um, now for the record, it's all fake. It's not real. <laughs> But you wouldn't know that by watching. Right, it looks right. it looks very real. Yeah. He got stuck in this rut. He's like, Tim, he's, a, he's doing a session with me. He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. But if I do anything other than mailing myself to another country, it doesn't get views. So that's that's the one cliff. You don't want to get stuck in stuck in that. But on the other hand, and, and, and the danger there is like just always like, hey, this video is doing really well. And so you upload the, to answer your question the next day three days from now, every week. And then that one keeps going and then you get stuck in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't want, you need to really keep your brand clear of, of what you're about. Otherwise you'll end up in really weird places and 
places. It's pretty hard to recover from, honestly. Like in a box. Cliff, yeah, well, yeah, in his case, he's like, I can't do anything else. No one watches it. How do I pivot? Right. And the answer to that is you need to really establish why this matters, like establish yes. a creed and a belief. Guys, this channel has never been about mailing myself in boxes. This is about seeking adventure wherever we can find it. There and yeah, go. you're going to have to do the boxes thing a few more times while saying that to get that into my reviewers. Then you can start to pivot to doing adventure in other ways. Yeah, perfect. So, um, good, adv good advice. The other cliff then is is like just never responding and never paying attention and being like, I only going to do one zoom video or one mail myself video. And that, and that's, you know, that's, that's probably not wise either. So mm. I don't think I'm really answering this question other than like <laughs> somewhere in between. <laughs> uh, I think it's fine to do a couple of zoom videos or box yep. mail yourself videos in a row, but just don't get stuck in that rut or yep. else uh, um, people will. And the, and the big thing is, unless you want to, you know, if you want to be known as the Zoom guy, then then that's a good strategy to follow. But if you do want to do lots of other stuff, um, then it's, it gets a little bit harder to pivot out of that. The last one, the fifth one, is very important for creators. And again, because if you're only coming back and looking at high level mm. metrics, you're not really getting a full picture. Like, like we've already indicated, you have some videos really performing and nothing you've done since then really is, but you don't know that because it's all mixed together. So we think it's really important to look at period over period. And if you're looking at that, again, the advanced metrics, you look upper right corner, click on the date range, and there's an option there for period over period. And you can use the compare tool to, to see that. And we think it's really important to look at uh, a lot of different things like this month versus last month and uh and or like this year versus last year and, and what i and the reason this is valuable is, is for two reasons one and it'll help you spot a lot of seasonality with your channel we've we had we have creators all the time we're like my channel's taking it's dying there must be an algorithm change or yes. something and we're like okay well let's look and then we'll do the period over period you're like oh no you went down the same time last year right. and then came back around two weeks from now. Like, let's wait, see how it happened. Two weeks later, let's go, oh, never mind. The algorithm <laughs> favors me again. No, the algorithm didn't change. <laughs> there's just like some, there's seasonality sure. and it helps creators panic a little bit less <laughs> when they when they can see that. And if you're brand new getting started, you might not have that data built up yet, but over time that you definitely mm. will. The second thing is that when you're just staring at your analytics every day, it's hard to see growth when you're like, it's like hard to see the mural when your nose is pressed against it. So period over period is a really good way to step back and take an overall look. You're like, man, I feel like I've been stuck at a hundred subscribers per day for like all for like a year. Right. That's the feel, you know how like the weather is yeah. like the feels like temperature and then right. there's like the actual temperature. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what's <laughs> happening here. And then you get, so you do the period over period and you're like, oh no, I've actually been doing a hundred subscribers a day for only about like three months now. I'm not stuck. You go the period of period, like this time last year, I was getting a hundred uh, subscribers per month. Yes. You're like, that's like 30 X growth, <laughs> <laughs> and, but you don't see it. And, mm. and it, it, so you get really frustrated when you're just looking at it that closely. So it, it, I think it's encouraging, it gives you a better perspective of the health of your overall channel. Sure. And um, yeah, so I think it's those, those metrics are pretty important too. And I love the idea of taking a helicopter view because sometimes you're just so close and you're so day to day and in the grindstone of actually releasing content and working out strategies and social media and you know the new TikTok that's on the block, should I get into it or not? You're just so involved in the weeds. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a helicopter view and say, okay, where was I this time last year? Where, where am I going to? What is my overall mission? Where should I be going to? Um, and again, remember things like budgets and quarterly things that brands work. They work on 90 day cycles. You know, could this be a slump? Because we know leading up to Christmas, big jump. Post Christmas, eh, not so much. But so all of these factors kind of really take into account but it's very, very easy to panic. I'm looking at my channel. I am seeing that it's breathing nicely. It's got a good, I can I work out what, what my baseline is. And I see that some videos now, I've just launched them and they're not doing quite as well as I think. Should I wait a couple of days? Is there a golden rule, 24 hours? Is there anything like that that I should be looking at to know, okay, this one's underperforming, I need to start changing. 
any tips for us on that front? I would look again at real time for that is another use for real time analytics to see normally my videos do about this, but this one's underperforming and we feel comfortable changing stuff right away. Like first hour, right. two hours, like, um, the, the, the key is to just keep an eye on the real time. So if you make a change and we usually try thumbnails first, um, not that there's any science behind right. it or anything, but that's just kind of like where we're at. We just try thumbnails first. And then if that's not doing anything, then we'll play with titles too. But okay. uh, it's just hard if you change too many things at once, yes. you don't really know what's working, what's making a difference and what's not. So, uh, so if you left it live for three hours before making a change, leave it live for at least another three hours. So you can have an apple to apples comparison on the difference. And if it's like, oh, it's performing even less now. And, and it's, and it's hard to, it's not, Perfect. Because it's hard to know exactly because the notifications will yeah. go out and it'll have whatever the title thumbnail was when the notification went out. And then, so people later can still be clicking on the old title thumbnail and getting into the new title thumbnail. So it's not like a perfect analysis. Mm. It's just kind of like the best we got and we can't filter out views from notifications. So, uh, but, yeah, so we'll, we'll experiment pretty quickly on it. Sometimes we just don't care enough to do it. Right. To honest, you know, <laughs> we're like, eh, uh, it did it, good enough. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Let's move on. But it's, but it's, I think it's also important to creators to know that it's okay to experiment. It's okay to zhuzh things up every once in a while. I mean, if you look at Tim's channel, there used to be a lot in the studio. Now Tim goes outside for a nature walk and there's a car driving by and, well, and that's perfectly fine. And I did that because we I did the groups, my analytics ah. to see black background versus sitting in my backyard and the the more natural environments way outperformed the studio environments. Not way, it was like, uh, I don't know, like 12, 15% more or something. Right. So then I was like, oh, well, if that motion do it, let's do some walk and talks versus sitting outside and the motion tended to hold people's attention even better. So that was all. Oh, what? what? On, Hold on it. You're, are you saying you experimented and then you discovered what works and did more of it? No. <laughs> we do lots of experiments, probably too many. <laughs> like we don't, we don't do it like one thing long enough to actually get traction. <laughs> like long term, we do, but yeah. we are so, we're always like, I just love to mess with things and change things and see how this works. And like, okay, that's working great. But what about this? Could this work better? And we don't like, love yeah, it. stay on one thing long enough to see the actual like long-term benefits of it, which is part of my job, you know, it's part of what we like to do, but you have to break it to know how to fix it. All right. So Tim, this has been amazing. Lots of golden nuggets really appreciate spending time with us. If people want to find you, they want to follow your journey. They want to learn from you, which I think they should, where can they find you on YouTube and social media? What's the best place? Yeah. I would love to have you guys join us over on our podcast. We have a new episode every Tuesday. So you can search iTunes or whatever podcasting app you use for video creators. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, all the places. So we've got new episodes where my team and I uh, really try to dive deeper into some of this next level stuff and and beyond the basics. But all right, you're ready to grow, we're going to choose growth, how to do that. So we we'll take a good, like, like we run does, good, you know, took a time to dive into that. And so we'd love to have you guys there. YouTube.com slash video creators is our channel. And um, if you want our free guide to the secret to building your YouTube audience, you can go to videocreators.com. Fantastic. And all of those will be in the show notes below so that you guys don't have to remember. You can just go clickety click and get there immediately. Uh, Tim, always fun. Looking forward to seeing you at an event in the future when we are allowed to travel again. I don't know when that's going to be, but always fun hanging out. So thank you again for sharing your knowledge with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. And for the rest of you guys still hanging out here, don't forget to share this episode with at least one other creator that's perhaps struggling, perhaps is not looking at the right analytics or even worse, not looking at analytics at all. Big, big mistake. Share this episode with them so they're able to be inspired. They're able to understand what's working for them, make those changes and succeed on this wonderful platform that we all love so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button in your favorite podcast application, and I will see you next Thursday on another episode of Tube Talk.
We hope you enjoyed this episode of Tube Talk, brought to you by vidIQ. Head over to vidIQ.com slash Tube Talk for today's show notes and previous episodes. Enjoy the rest of your video making day.